Hi everyone. Uh, so this week I am recording my tip of the week here from Luxembourg. So hopefully I am going to be able to get um, a high enough quality of the video over the internet to get you guys a video out there on Friday. Now the video that I want to do this week is on importing images. And um, in order to cover this concept, I'm going to go ahead and do it in Storyboard Pro first and then in Animate Pro. And the concept is the same whether you're using Storyboard, Storyboard Pro, Storyboard Pro 3D, Animate, Animate Pro, Harmony. In all cases, the concept is the same. So no matter which one I show it to you in, you'll be able to take that knowledge and use it in all of our software. So I'll just create a project here called Blank. And by default, by the way, it selects your HGTV vertical. If you're working with vertical, or, or sorry, if you're working with HGTV images, and you're going to be importing images in from outside, either whether those are images that you're scanning in from paper or images that you're creating in Photoshop. In both scenarios, when you're importing images in, you want to select the vertical option. It's very important to understand what the difference is between the vertical option and the horizontal option. So to show you this, I'll do the wrong one first. I'll start by doing HTTV without the vertical. And then when I show you the two, you'll understand what the difference is. So when I create my project here and I am just about ready to work, um, one of the things that I can do is I can go to view grid and then I can show the grid. And this is just going to help me to be able to see um, what I'm doing um, when I am importing an image in or whether I'm using a drawing tool. So I just turned on the grid and then I used the drawing tool on here. And what you can see is that um, by default when you show the grid, we use a 12 field grid to define the drawing space for each drawing layer. Um, and this 12 field grid, we use it for traditional purposes because we still have some studios out there that are going to take their storyboards or their um, animations and they're going to print them out on paper. And for those studios that are printing out on paper, there is no punched HDTV paper. It's all still 12 field or 16 field paper. So we use this 12 field paper by default um, just to, to continue working in the traditional space. But you'll notice if I mask the camera, you see that the camera is actually cutting off at a different spot than the, than the grid here. And um, in this case, it's actually the camera itself is cutting off um, before the grid is, or the, the grid here is fit vertically with my camera. So to make this more evident, let me just go ahead and delete that, um, that little image that I had um, drawn in there. And I'll do instead, I will we'll import an image as a layer. And I'll take a test image that I have in here that is at HD resolution and just plop it in there. And you'll see now that when I, when I import that image in, you see that my 12 field grid that's defined here by these boxes, my 12 field grid is fit horizontally with my camera view. And that means that, you know, it's actually taking this 12 field grid and it's using the the east and west axis or the x and y axis and it's fitting that axis of the grid with my camera. But if I turn off that grid here for a second, you'll see that my image that imports in imports in too large. And that's because when it fits the image with the grid, it's fitting the image always with the top and bottom of your grid. That's always the way it's done. So um, in order for us to fit the image itself with the camera, what we need to do is we need to fit our drawing grid vertically with the camera. And that's where that vertical option comes from when you look at HGTV vertical. So if I go into my storyboard properties and I switch now over to HGTV vertical, I can click on OK there. And it asks me now, do I want to preserve the framing that I've already done? And I want to click on no because the framing is not good. The framing that I've done makes my image too large for my camera view. So if I click on no, now what it does is if I turn off that grid again, you see now it has reframed my camera so that the camera is fitting vertically with my drawing grid and it's also fitting vertically with my imported image because my imported image is always fit vertically with the drawing grid. So hopefully this clears up. I know it comes up now and again on the forums and for people that are working in studios of why is it that when we're working with HD images it imports them in at the wrong size. And you need to just make sure that when you're working in your project 
you're working with this HGTV vertical option. Okay, so um, now I've opened up Animate Pro and I have created a blank scene file here in Animate Pro and I want to do the same thing where I'm going to import an image in and by default when you select the HDTV option in Anime Pro it does the same thing where it fits my grid in horizontally with that view um, so you can see that right here when you look at your project if I now select import image and I browse to my HD image here which I will select from the same list as before if I choose to vectorize this option or this image uh, what it's going to do and let's just go ahead and do that here, is it's going to fit it with that drawing grid, just like it would in Storyboard Pro. So when I vectorize an image, it always will fit it with the drawing grid for the layer you know, that I've set. And you can double check if you look at any regular layer and you have your grid turned on and you can see how that layer exists whenever you have a drawing tool selected. So if I select my, my HD TV imported layer, with a drawing tool selected, I'll be able to see that grid, and I can see how the grid is actually too big here for my screen. So just like with Storyboard Pro, if I go to Scene Settings, I can switch here, but now I can switch from Horizontal Fit to Vertical Fit, and you see how just doing that is going to refit any imported vector images in here. Now, just for your common knowledge, if you choose instead to import an image and I'll select the same image as before. But instead, you choose to not vectorize that image. Now you have these alignment rules. And these alignment rules are a little bit different for these bitmap images because in the case of the alignment rules, what it's going to do is it's actually going to fit it with the camera directly instead of fitting it with your drawing grid uh, because you no longer have that concept of working on a drawing grid. When you import a bitmap image in, it's kind of set. So let's just take, for example, let's go back to my scene settings and I will switch this back to horizontal fit. So I have the wrong fit for my imported image that I did before. And then I'm going to import a new image in here. I'll do the same image as I did before. In this case, I will not vectorize the image and I'll choose fit. And I can just leave that as a composite. So you'll see now when I look at the bitmap version of this image, it, it fit it correctly to the screen. And that's because when you import a bitmap image in, it actually fits it to the camera directly instead of fitting it to the drawing grid. Um, and just for your common knowledge of what these different options mean in here, fit fits it directly to your camera. What pan does is pan is going to assume that the, um, the image that you're bringing in is what we call a pan cell in traditional animation and that means that your image is a lot wider um, than it is tall because when we do in traditional animation when we do a pan over a background that background is going to be very wide so that you can pan across the image and by default when you fit a pan cell in you'll fit the left hand side of the image with your camera so if you select the pan option, basically what it's going to do is it's going to select or it's going to fit that left hand side of your image in there. And let me just select the file again. It will fit the left hand side of your image with the camera view in this case. So if I just uncheck that option to show you, you see what it did here was it actually fit the left hand side of my image with the drawing or with the camera. So now if I wanted to do a pan where I actually animate the camera from the left to the right, I'm set up for the start of the pan already. And then the last option in there, um, if we look at our import images dialog, if I go and select the same image again, the last in, um, import option when you're doing a bitmap image is project resolution. And what project resolution does is it looks at the source image and in this case, my source image is HD 1920 by 1280, uh, or 1080, sorry. And then what it does is it fits that with the resolution of my project. And in this case, my project resolution is also HD 1920 by 1080. So when I do this project resolution option, it will fit the same exactly with my camera. What this is more useful, though, is if you have a background that's much larger than your camera view, 
and you want to import the bitmap image at exactly the correct resolution to show it at pixel depth, then you want to select project resolution. What I mean by that is, if I'm working in an HD project and I have a background that's much bigger, let's say two times bigger than my project, but I want to load it in at exactly the correct resolution to see it um, without getting any pixelation or any blurs or anything, but at its, uh, I guess what you would say, at its maximum you know, resolution, then you want to import it in with project resolution. So if I had an image that was twice HD, when I chose project resolution and imported it in, it would be twice as big as my camera view. It would be, it'd be pretty much like, you know, out here. Um, so that just means that you know that you can't zoom in any farther than that without getting pixelation or blurring. Um, so it can be useful to understand what the project resolution option here means.